the colon itself is a very complex architecture. There's lots of different cell types within the colonic mucosa, not to mention all of the exogenous factors like bacteria and everything else. I am interested in understanding how the epithelial cells within the colonic mucosa undergo very early molecular changes that start them on the pathway to neoplasia. And so by, by being able to microdissect out those cell populations that we think are, are undergoing oncogenic transformation and to remove them from the mass of tissue and study them specifically, it adds an enormous amount of power to what we do and, and increases our sensitivity to ask questions about changes that are at very, very low frequencies, which is how we were able to find a lot of the molecular defects that we've been studying over the, in, in the earliest stages of colon cancer. Laser capture microdissection enabled us to take a tissue, a frozen tissue, identify small clusters of altered cells, and then remove them specifically from the surrounding tissue, capture them, isolate DNA or protein or RNA, and study them specifically without any of the confounding factors of the surrounding stroma. LCM, after reading th these papers, I realized LCM might be a perfect way to separate out individual parts of the colon that come from different parental lineages and separate them, isolate them, and study them very specifically. It was an essential part of how we study early stages of colon cancer in the human colon now. The biopsy samples that we get are so small, they're, they're, they're uh, taken by a, by a forceps, a biopsy forceps that gives us maybe a millimeter or two cubed of, of total material. And so, and within that material, there may be a dozen crypts that are abnormal, and the rest of the crypts and the rest of the, of the mucosa is, is, is all normal tissue. So we needed, we absolutely needed L, uh, the LCM in order to separate out that small population of cells that we wanted to study specifically. And in order to, to, we needed extremely sensitive methodologies in order to identify even a common mutation like KRAS or BRAF in these samples. So by combining the, the laser microdissection with, with genomic sequencing platforms, we were able to continually scale down our, our sensitivities or improve our, expand our sensitivities, scale down our, our amount of cells that we needed to work with to the point where uh, we've now done and published last year in proteomics a, a, a LCM proteomics approach where we can do proteomic analysis of ERK1 and ERK2 phosphorylation state on as few as uh, several hundred cells from LCM. Everything we do has to be at the absolute limit of sensitivity, has to be pushed way down and we have to be incredibly efficient with these samples and really careful with them as well. So, you know, being able to pull out those cells that we think are targeted and being able to do it on very small numbers of cells is absolutely, it's a must. The use of LCM has helped us enormously. We couldn't do what we've done, we couldn't find what we found in our human specimens without applying these ultra-sensitive methods. It, it couldn't be done, period. Thank you.